Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to another video. I'm super excited for this one, but before we get started, be sure to check out my Instagram listed down below. I post lots of fun things there so you don't want to miss out. Today's video is going to be all about print and cut. A lot has changed since I made videos years ago, so I wanted to give you guys an updated video on some basics of print and cut, what is print and cut, how to use print and cut. So we're gonna make these really cute stickers and I'm gonna go over some of the different things that people run into when using print and cut with your Cricut. So let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. We are gonna talk all about Cricut's print then cut feature here in Cricut Design Space. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some images and then we'll talk a little bit more about what print and cut is. So in order to upload your images, you're just going to do it like you would if you were using an SVG. In this case, we're going to use PNGs. We're going to click upload. Then you're going to click upload image and then you can click browse. Now I saved all of mine in my Cricut folder and then under the print then cut folder that I have, and then this one kind of had a strange name, so I'm gonna maybe have to look for it for just a second, but it was these really cute yellow stickers that I found on design bundles, and I'll link them down below. So once I found that, I'm gonna open the folder and open this subfolder here. Now you can see that each of our images is its own different image. So we're gonna need to upload these one at a time. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with Be Happy and click Open and it will load it right here. Now you can see that it's gonna ask us what kind of um, image type we wanna use. I always choose complex, but we're not gonna really do anything to the image. Just click continue and simply click sit, apply and continue. Then you'll wanna save your image as a print and cut image and click upload. Now you can also do a drag and drop version of uploading where you can click upload image and in this section, you can just open up your folder down from your taskbar and open this folder and then you can just simply drag and drop. You still have to go one at a time, but it is a little bit quicker than browsing. So again, I just choose complex, click continue and apply and continue. Save as a print and cut image and then upload. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these uploaded and then we'll talk a little bit more. Once you have all of your images loaded, what you can do is, I can see that I'm missing one on here, so what I'm gonna do is click view all, and you're gonna click on each of the images that you want to put into your canvas. So in this case, I wanna put all of the ones that I just did. So all you simply have to do is just click on each image that you wanna put onto the canvas and then just simply click add to canvas. Now this might take a second, Cricut Design Space doesn't love working with the um, print and cut feature sometimes. It can be a lot of information for Cricut Design Space to handle. So you may just need to give it a minute to load. Now once all your stickers load, you'll notice that they're really, really big. So all I'm simply going to do is just change my size right up here and I'm just gonna change this size down a bit and I'm just gonna change it to a five right now for its width and that'll just make them so they fit on my screen so that you guys can see them a lot better. Now one thing to note with the Cricut Design Space is that you are limited to your print size. It can print 6.75 wide by 9.25 high. So in order to make the most of my paper, I like to start with a template. So what we'll do is open up a shape and you're just gonna open up a square. Really simple, this is just a quick little trick that you can use when using print and cut. You're gonna wanna click this little padlock down here in the lower left hand corner, and you wanna change your size up here at the top. So I'm gonna change to 6.75 and then choose my height at 9.25. Simple as that. Now you're gonna right click on your square and send that to the back because this is what we're going to use as our template. Now I'm gonna make some pretty small stickers with this. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm just gonna change them to about one and a half inches wide because we're gonna make some really little stickers. So as I do each sticker, I'm just gonna place it on to my sheet here and I'm just gonna change each one of them so that they're 1.5 wide. Now all I'm doing is setting them on to my sticker paper 
as I'm calling this, my little template. And so let's go ahead and just change the sizes of all of these and just lay them out on our paper. We'll move them around a little bit as we get this all done. And I'll show you guys a couple little tricks to this. Now that we have everything sized down, we can move things around a little bit so that we can fit as much as we possibly can onto our sticker sheet. Now, because these are made specifically already for stickers, there's not a lot that we need to do to work with them. But I am gonna show you a couple other things that may help you if you are working with some other types of images. So we'll just kind of arrange these a little bit so that we can fit them. Now, I do wanna leave a little space in between my stickers and the edge of my paper because I am gonna leave the bleed on and that way we make sure nothing kind of cuts into anything else. So I'm just kind of scooching things up and around and over a little bit just so we can fit quite a few things. Now, let's say that we wanted to use print and cut on something that is already layered. So let's take a look and see what I have in my uploaded images. So this design right here is actually a layered SVG, but let's say we wanna use it to make a sticker. I'm gonna show you how you can do that and how to prevent some of the problems I see with a lot of stickers. So what we'll do is select it and click add to canvas. I'm gonna show you a couple of things in the layers panel that you'll notice is different compared to what we uploaded as a PNG. You'll notice that these are all just one single layer, one single piece, where the lover rainbow here, this love rainbow, is multiple pieces. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and size it down a little bit and figure out about how big I want to make it. So that looks pretty good, we can kind of play with it. But what you'll see is, do you see how you see all this gray between all the parts? What that means is that Cricut Design Space is going to cut anywhere that you see gray. So in this rainbow, it's gonna cut each of these little layers out, and we don't want it to do that. We want it to remain as one single piece. You'll see for an example here with our donut, it's gonna cut out the center, but that's really okay. That's a totally fine piece to cut out. But this one, we want this all to be one single piece to be used as a sticker. So there's a couple of things that you can do to make this happen. The first thing that I wanna do is click the word flatten, which is right down here in the lower part of your layers panel, and it looks like stacks of paper on top of each other, just click flatten. That's automatically gonna change this image to a print then cut image. But just doing that isn't going to prevent it from cutting around the rainbow in a way that we don't want it to cut because it's gonna cut out each part individually. Cricut has added the offset feature, which is super helpful when you wanna do something like this. So all I'm gonna do is click offset and it's gonna add a pretty large offset to this. You'll see that it kind of shows this blue outline. Now I definitely don't want my offset to be quite that large. So what I do is I change the percentage right here to something a little bit smaller. That looks like a pretty good offset. So I'm gonna click apply. Now you'll note that our offset turns black and I would really much rather have a white offset. So all I simply need to do is up here at the top, select where the little black square is and just simply change that to white. That looks really, really good and I think it looks nice and bright. So the next thing that we actually need to do is to make sure that we flatten our offset to our print then cut. I'll show you what happens if we don't do a couple other little quick steps to this, because if you don't do these steps, you're gonna end up with a bit of a mess. So I'm just gonna click make it right now to show you what this does, and we'll come back and kind of fix it so that it does what we want it to do. You'll notice that over here, we have all of our stickers, and you'll notice that they're not at all in the way that I set them up to be. You'll also notice that we have a second sheet, which is just our big square. So this is really wrong and it's not gonna cut right. And what you see here, this empty space, is actually the offset for our love rainbow. So what I need to do is I'm gonna click cancel. And what I wanna do is flatten my rainbow to my white offset by just selecting both in the layers panel and clicking flatten again. The way that I like to describe flatten is if you were taking two pieces of cookie dough and squishing them together to make one piece of cookie dough. 
you will be able to easily do that. It's super simple and really, really easy to do. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm actually going to resize this guy down to the 1.5 just so he's more even with the other sizes. And I'm going to duplicate this whole section of stickers. So what you can do is um, either collect, click select all, which is right here at the top next to edit. And it's going to select everything on your screen and you can click duplicate. Or you can just select the stickers that you specifically want and click duplicate here. Sometimes duplicating everything can take a minute, but you'll see here now I have two of the same sets. Now we don't need the square. We can just delete that completely because we're just going to use the stickers. So what I'm going to do is just grab some of these stickers and kind of squeeze them on in. Kind of funny that I said squeeze the day. And we'll just kind of fit as many of the stickers as we can into this square. Now again, like I said, I do want to leave a little bit of space because we are going to have some bleed around these. So I am going to try to leave a little bit of space between the stickers so that we have that extra area for where we're going to have any of our little bleed. Now you'll see that this one might be a little bit too big to fit anywhere. You can always just resize them down so that they fit better onto your page. Like I said, I just like to fill this as much as I possibly can. I can use some of the smaller size stickers for other things. So I just like to kind of size them down a little bit, stick them in corners and really fill up my sheet. I love this little be kind one. So I'm going to go ahead and stick him down here really small. And like I said, these are going to be a little bit small, but that's totally okay. It's really not a big deal. Now let's say that you want to do a couple extra of this little sunflower here. All you'll need to do is select him. You can either click duplicate up here at the top of your screen or with it selected, right click and you can just click duplicate there. It's really up to you and what works best for your brain and how you want to do things. But again, you can kind of just do it whatever works. So now that we have our sticker sheet completely covered, I'm going to go ahead and close out all of these by just deleting them. So I'm just going to select them and click the X. Now, the next thing that we need to do is to just make sure that everything stays in place. There are two ways that you can do this. So I'm going to show you both ways and I'll tell you why I like one way better than the other. Now, I will say at this step, I do like to click save and save my stickers just to be um, safe. That way I don't lose any of my work. So I'm just going to call them yellow positive stickers and I'm going to save them into my sticker collection and click save. The reason I do that is just in case Design Space decides to crash, I don't have to go through and resize everything again. This way I've got it saved. So I want to make sure to really fill up my sheet. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to duplicate my donut a couple of times. I'm going to just kind of fill this as much as I can, even if I'm not going to use these stickers. I just want to fill this so that you guys can really see why we're doing this the way we're doing this. So again, I'm just going to kind of move stuff around. And that's what you're going to do when you make your stickers. You want to fill your sheet as much as you can. That way you have that extra kind of space and you have more stickers. And you'll see I could move these over a little bit and probably fit something else over here real small. So let's go ahead and see what else we can fit. I bet you we can make this lemonade a little bit smaller. We can duplicate that and make it a little bit smaller. So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and fill this up. You can turn stuff you can do what you need to do to fill as much space as you possibly can. And you want to get pretty close to the edges here, but you don't need to be like right on top of them. But you do if you can get close to the edge, the better you will be. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate a few more and then we'll move on to our next step. OK, I think I filled this up pretty tight. So once I've got it really, really well filled up, the next thing that I want to do is to hide this gray square. We no longer really need it. And actually, let me see. I think I can actually fit one more donut right here. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. And we're filling this for a couple of reasons. One, so we don't waste any of our sticker sheet. But two, so I can show you kind of what this is going to do if we don't do a certain step next. So what we'll do here is we're going to go all the way down to the bottom of our layers panel and we have our square. Now you can either simply hide this by using the little eyedropper, like this little eyeball guy, or you can simply delete. I'm going to go ahead and just go with the hiding it feature. Now I'm going to show you what happens if we click make it from here. 
because we haven't done this other step that I highly recommend doing because you'll see that we had all of our stickers fitting on to that sheet without being too big. But over here, you'll notice that it's moved some of our stickers to this other page. And we definitely don't want that because it's wasting paper. So what I'm going to do is just cancel my cut really quick. And I'm going to show you two options for how you can make this sticker sheet hold the way you want it to so that everything prints on the same sheet. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a square around this and select everything. Now, I always double check my measurements to make sure that they're within my print then cut range. So this needs to be below 6.75, which it is. And then this one needs to be below 9.25. Now, we could definitely bump this up a little bit if we want to make these just a little bit bigger. And I also don't like the number that that made. So I'm just going to bump them up just a hair just so we don't have that number. So what we'll do now, there's two things that you can do. The first item that you can do is click attach. That's going to hold everything in place. The way I kind of figure that one so that it's easier to remember is that it would be like putting a piece of tape on something and taping it to a wall. It's going to stay the way you have it exactly the way you want it. So now when we click make it, you'll see that everything is held in place. We'll only have everything on one sheet and it's going to cut it on that one sheet in the exact order that we saved it in. But what you can actually do to help Cricut Design Space and especially because sometimes it can be a little bit slow with your designs. I'm gonna go ahead and select this and I'm gonna go ahead and detach it. And you'll see here now that we have all of our parts again. You can simply collect, select all or draw that square around it. But what you just need to do now is click flatten. It's gonna make it one single piece and it's a lot less for Cricut Design Space to think about. So it tends to work a lot faster. Because nothing was overlapping, everything will still cut out in its own individual sheet. I can show you guys what that individual sheet looks like. I'm just gonna change the color of the background on our Cricut Design Space here so that you can see that each sticker has its own space. It's gonna cut out in its own area and it will be really, really cute once it's done. So these are super fun and this is a great way to make your own sticker sheet. Now, another thing that you can do is if you don't want the centers of these donuts to cut out. So I'm gonna go ahead and unflatten these really quick because I wanna show you something, because like these little donuts, these little small ones, these holes in the center are really, really small. So if you don't want that center to cut out, all you need to simply do is select your donut and you can actually simply just make a little circle behind this using a shape. So I'm just gonna open a circle from my shape panel. And this is super easy, really, really simple to do. I'm just gonna make it pretty small. I'm gonna change the color of it to white and I'm gonna put it behind this donut by simply making it just small enough that it's a little bit smaller than the donut itself. I'm gonna click on the white circle and I'm gonna send it to the back. Then what I wanna do is select this white circle and this single donut. So I'm just gonna draw a square around them and click flatten. What that does is again, it makes it all one piece so that it fits Inside of here, it's gonna be all one piece and it's not gonna cut out the center because that is pretty small. I'm gonna go ahead and let it cut the center out of this one and these other small ones just so you guys can see the difference of what that does and what that looks like. But that's a simple way that if you have a sticker that has a hole in it or has small places that you don't want it to cut, you can just add a simple circle behind it and you'll fix that little spot that may cut not so great. So again, I'm just gonna select the entire design and I'm going to flatten. Now again, I flatten because it does hold them together and it's a little less for Cricut Design Space to think about. Now we're ready to go ahead and make this and actually print it out. So I'm gonna show you a few steps over here that you can take to make sure that you're gonna get the best print and cut from your design. So it may take a moment for your stickers to show up here, but once they do, you're good to go. All we're gonna do is click continue and you'll see here that we have this option of send to printer. So I'm gonna show you a few options here that will help you out if you're doing anything with the print and cut. I'm gonna click send to printer. Now there's a few options here that you'll wanna take note of. It may take a moment to load here again as well, but by flattening it, it takes a lot less time. So just keep that in mind when you're working with your print and cut options. I'm gonna look at my printer options here and show you a couple of things that you can actually do 
So you can either send this out to another source to be printed or save it on your computer if you want to. It's really up to you. But one of the things that I love is this Microsoft print to PDF option. Go ahead and click on that. And you really don't need to click on any of this other stuff. You can leave bleed on. It doesn't really matter. And then click the word print. This is great if you don't own a home printer and you want to send it out to Staples, Office Max, your library, or wherever you need to take your item to print it. You can do it by saving this to a PDF. Now this does send, tend to take a moment for my computer and that may just be my computer, but once it's over here, you can just save it. I'm just gonna call this yellow stickers and I'm gonna put this again into my print and cut folder so that it's easy for us to find. And I'm gonna click save. So I'll show you what that PDF looks like. So over in my print and cut folder, what we're gonna do is look for the item that we saved as yellow stickers, which is right down here. And when I open this, you'll see that it looks just like the picture that we saw in our Cricut Design Space. So this is just a great way that you can save this, send it off if you need to, if you don't have a home printer or you wanna print it somewhere else, if you wanna print this on laser copy paper and you don't have a laser copier, things like that. So this is just a really good option if you wanted to do something like that. It's really helpful and I actually like to save a lot of my stickers like this just so that I have them if I ever needed to use them in another program. Now, let's say we're gonna print these with our regular printer. All I'm gonna do is click send to printer again. And this time I'm gonna select my actual inkjet printer. I'm gonna go ahead and print these on some StarCraft printable vinyl. So what I wanna do is find the printer I wanna use, which is gonna be my ET2720. You can change how many copies you want it to print, but for this, we're just gonna go ahead and print one copy. I am gonna leave bleed on. What bleed does is it adds a little bit more of a border onto your sticker so that you're not left with such an offset. If you have something like it cuts a little to the one side, it won't be as noticeable by using the bleed, especially if you don't have a white offset around your stickers. So what I'm gonna do too is turn on this system dialog. Now the system dialog is gonna bring up our printer settings. This will sometimes go behind your design space. So just keep that in mind. If you don't see it after a minute or so, try minimizing design space. So what I'm gonna do is click the word print and that's not gonna send it to your printer right away by using the system dialog. It's gonna allow us a moment for it to open our printer settings. Once it's open my printer settings, I always double check that it's got the right printer selected. You can see here that it doesn't. So what I wanna do is scroll over and find my ET2720. Now from here, what you're gonna do is click preferences. Once you're into this section here with our printing preferences, I like to change my paper and I use the um, presentation paper mat. That works really well, but again, you'll really wanna kind of play with it and see what works best for the printer that you have. They're not all exactly the same. You wanna change your quality to high. And then the next thing that I wanna do is go up here to more options. My printer has a high speed setting and I wanna make sure to turn that off. A lot of times when you get those lines in your designs, it's because your high speed setting is on and that can really make a huge difference when you go to print and get a quality print. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And from here I can click print and send it to my printer. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure to load my printer with the right printable product. And then I'll take you over so that you guys can watch it print. While we watch this print, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about what type of files you can print with. So PNGs and JPGs are awesome and they work really, really well, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a transparent background or they're already set up for stickers, or you can use the offset feature like I showed you earlier in the video. You can also print SVGs like I showed you earlier as well. Again, you'll just need to kind of mess with them a little bit and play with them. But another fun thing that you can use is of course a family photo or a picture you know, of an event, something like that. You can use print and cut with those as well. Really the limits are endless when it comes to what you can truly print and cut and how creative you can be with it. I have tutorials using print and cut for lots of different items and I will link the playlist down below as well as up on top of the screen there for you too, where I use print and cut for a lot of things between making acrylic, uh, blanks, I also have made magnets, so there's a lot that you can do with them. So be sure to check those out and let's get to the rest of the video. 
Now this next step is very much an optional step, but I thought just for a little bit of fun, we would put some holographic laminate over this. It helps protect your stickers. I don't typically do this if I'm gonna use these stickers as a planner sticker, but I just thought it would be fun and a quick way to just show you another step that you can do with print and cut. So what I'm going to do is cut this down so that it fits within the square. I don't want this holographic edge to be on any part of my re registration lines because if it is, it's going to be hard for the Cricut to read it. So all I'm doing is cutting just a small little slit where I want to cut my paper. And this one does have a grid. I'll link this down below. So all I'm going to do is just cut along my grid here. I got this from Amazon, so I will, like I said, I'll link it down below. This is such a fun paper. And then all I'm gonna do is find my slit at the top here, and then cut best I can in a straight line down this side. There's lots of different laminates you can use. I'm just out of my StarCraft, and I just thought this one was really fun. So what I'm gonna do now is I flip this over, and I'm gonna go ahead and peel off the backing a little bit. And I use my pin pen to get this started. And then I just peel off just enough that I can kind of get it started and separated from the holographic clear portion. Then all I need to do is just pull this back a little bit just to leave like almost a tab at the top. And then I'm just gonna take this and fold this portion backwards. Now this is where it's really nice to have a plastic squeegee. I would not recommend using a hard scraper like the Cricut one for this because it can cause scratching. So what I'm going to do is lay this down and I'm going to center it best I can right here at the top. And then all I'm going to do is pull this up a little bit and just take my squeegee and help this kind of come off at a nice smooth section. And as you see, I'm just moving the squeegee kind of back and forth along the edge of our sticker here, the laminate. And you just want to make sure that you get this stuck really well down. Now I do find that it goes better if you're kind of going back and forth, not so much if you're going like this. So the back and forth motion really seems to work a lot better than going up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and get the laminate on here. And then I will put this into the machine and show you guys what the next step is. Now we're gonna cut this on the medium cardstock setting. Once I put that laminate on there, I find that it, the medium cardstock really does work best, but you'll wanna do some test cutting before you choose your setting. So what I wanna do now is take a blue mat, and a blue mat is the best for using like a paper product. And I like to actually flip mine so that I have the top of the mat where I'm gonna place my sticker closest to me and then I'm going to lay this down and I want to get it as straight as I possibly can on here. And you want to get it as close to the edge as you can. And again, trying to make sure to keep it straight. Now this ink down here at the bottom, that happens to me occasionally with my printer. It's totally normal, not a big deal, so you don't have to worry about it. I could probably use a print head cleaning, but it's not going to get anywhere, so you don't have to worry. I let these dry a little bit before I really do anything with them. So I like to make sure they're well held down onto my mat. So I'll just give them a little squeege across. And then let's go ahead and pull our machine in. And like I said, I cut this on the medium cardstock setting. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this start cutting. I'll let you guys watch this from a different angle so that you can see it better. But it's going to turn on a light here in the center. It's gonna scan the lines on our page. This is how it knows where to cut. Then what it's going to do is it's going to cut around all of our stickers. Alright, now that it's done cutting, I did do a little check, so I'll usually just take my pin pen kind of lift up a sticker just to make sure that it cut through. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and unload and I'm gonna go ahead and move the machine out of the way so that you guys can see this just a little bit better. What I like to do when I unload stickers or cardstock, really vinyl too, just so that it doesn't get all curly. I'm gonna put my mat face down. Then what I'm gonna do is take my mat and roll it backwards. 
You'll see that as I'm rolling, my paper is coming off. So I'm just using my hand under my paper. And I'm just kind of like, I would like to call it like, do you know in high school or in gym class in like elementary school maybe, when you kind of did that like crab crawl on your hands and knees, like on your back, that's kind of what this makes me feel like I'm doing with my hand is a little crab crawl. Then all I have now is this full sheet of stickers. So what's great about this is there's a couple of different things that you can do here. You can just peel the stickers off individually. You can also peel the entire backing, but you'll see here that we have this great little sticker all cut out, ready to go, super easy to use. This is such an easy thing to do. Now I will say I did calibrate my machine. It's not working fantastic and it hasn't been since the latest update. But I know that their print and cut needs some work and they are working on it. So just keep that in mind. So remember that we talked about the donut. So we have two that one has the hole cut out and one doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and peel this one off really quick. And you'll see that this one doesn't have the hole cut out like the other one does. So this one doesn't have the hole cut out. This is the one that we used the um, flatten feature with. So you can see that one doesn't have a hole. And then if we come over here, I'm going to find the one that we did allow the hole to cut, which should be this one right here at the bottom. So that way you can kind of see the difference. Now the hole didn't cut out great, so I'm going to peel it out. And again, my calibration's way off. I've tried calibrating and it's just not been working. So let me show you a close up of this one. So that one you can see that the hole is cut out. Again, not a great cut, but it gives you the idea. If you're having trouble with your machine like this where it's not cutting great, you can use the calibration feature. I will link below the video to show you how to use calibration with this, but that is just simply how you have to do that. It's so cute. These came out really good other than kind of being off cut, but I think they came out really cute. Thank you so much for joining me for Print and Cut Basics. I hope that you learned a few tips and tricks with using Print and Cut with your Cricut. Again, I will link the playlist and a couple of the videos that I mentioned down below in the video's description, plus links to all the products I used here in this video. I hope you guys had so much fun. I always have fun hanging out with you. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos all the time. If you're looking for something specific, let me know in those comments down below. And if I don't have a video for it, I will make one. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And as always, happy crafting.